We've had a lot of snow and uh, we had some snowballs thrown on the window so it's a good time to clean the window and also make a video. So it's still cold and uh, I try and be as quick as, as I possibly can in this video because there's still loads of things that I need to cover or I should cover to help people with their liquidator or thinking of transitioning over to use a liquidator I want to show you the best and easy options uh, to use to get the most benefit out of your tool or tools I suggest you're getting tools not not this tool right so um, I watched a, a window cleaning video about two years ago from a UK window cleaner and he said um, I changed my technique that's okay that that makes sense change the technique because I get bored doing it one way and that, that, that to me stopped, stopped making sense so I stopped watching other YouTube window cleaners uh, videos because a lot of the things they say is just doesn't make any sense or it's not relevant so there's one guy I watch and that's Tradman because he talks a lot of sense and lots of things um, work what, what he suggests so it's worthwhile watching videos where you're gonna get some knowledge and also get some information that's gonna help you progress in, in the way you work whatever they're talking about I just talk about tools and techniques so he said um, I, um, I change things up when I get bored so changing things up is a good thing but when I get bored that's not that, that stops making sense so I'm gonna give you a quick example I'm gonna use this uh, to begin with so windows all windows are difficult some sorry some windows are difficult some windows are easy to work on you don't know until you start working on it so changing the technique to what's how how the window and, and the squeegee react makes sense to me so I'm always looking for that minimum move as much as possible but sometimes I have to make more maneuvers to cater for the window I'm working on so um, the, these windows they, they can be funny to work on so sometimes just now I've just dug into the frame right so I know there's going to be some sort of issue with friction or with the rubber getting in in between the glass and the frame but if I'm careful I can still get this done if I put it in the right angle that I want to get it to perform best at and I'm going to get this window done in three moves so that worked uh, but you'll often see me and Tradman work very very similar in the, in terms of we come down and then we go back up like this and the reason why we do that we still get the, uh, the three moves like this but it's to prime the squeegee in the maximum spread on the top edge of the squeegee quite often it's easier to come down and then go back up because you're taking all this residue off here first and then you go in back up again and then sometimes in the cold weather and in the cold weather you often get the, the uh, trowels left behind anywhere your squeegee travels by the way you're leaving an invisible trail just like if I'm walking in the snow I've got a big snowman next to me here you're gonna see all these trails let me show you the trails these trails are not invisible right those trails will still be there if the snow wasn't there you just can't see them now the squeegee also leaves a trail and in the cold damp atmosphere especially in the UK quite often you get a trail left behind if you just leave it most of the time you won't have any problems it's just taking a while for the squeegee moisture to evaporate when you've made that pass <coughs> but um, anyway carrying on adapting and evolving if I've got a problem with a window if I know this window is going to give me a problem I will either change the tool size go for a smaller option because obviously the, the, the longer the squeegee um, and the, the less chance you've got to manoeuvre in a certain space I'm using a 14 inch here I could get away with using a, um, a, an 18 or a 16 but if the window is going to give me a little bit of a problem maybe it's better to pick and choose a smaller squeegee so I've got more chance to manoeuvre just in case there is some sort of friction on the frame or on the rubber sill or whatever so adapting and evolving to your environment makes perfect sense but 
just evolving and, and adapting because someone like the, the guy said because I get bored I'll change things up a bit like he was cleaning French panes and every technique he was doing was a time wasting technique there was no efficiency whatsoever it was just changing things up for the sake of changing things up whereas I'm here to say you should change things up as and when you need to so um, another good point to talk about evolving in the seasons when it's really really hot and the windows are um, as soon as you put the soap on the windows they start evaporating yeah sometimes some windows on, on some tinted, tinted windows you see steam coming off because it's burning off so quickly now a lot of people say well if you add the soap to the glass poles and blades you're going to get quicker evaporation and you will and you will with really any sort of solution even if you're using a glide agent it will still evaporate but because I work two handed number one on the ground because I use a saturated washer and because for many many years I've been used to cleaning glass that's maybe 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees in temperature because I'm cleaning ovens um, you know the uh, they're called mangoes they're Turkish um, coal um, restaurants they have these coal uh, burners where they cook all their food and have these big um, windows in front and they need cleaning um, so I normally only clean one side and that's the, the customer side but every week uh, I clean an oven uh, and uh, big, big 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 pain in the glass and this is what I do and this is what I do when it's um, hot I don't have any problems working in the heat I don't enjoy working in the heat I don't like the heat but I have to still earn money I, I'm, I'm not I don't make any money from my YouTube channel I don't make any money from, from any other means uh, so I have to work to survive so normally what I would do in normal circumstances is use two hands obviously wet the window and make as many as least I should say moves as possible um, as best as possible and get the zero detail effect that's the last thing I'm looking for but when I'm working on these ovens uh, these windows they're, they're that far away from from the coal uh, so um, you, they cook meat and vegetables they're, they're just like an oven so there's very high temperatures there and they're that far away from the from the from the coal burner so what do I do well first of all I've got to accept I'm going to work longer, harder, slower and possibly get less results. If you think of the term of working longer, harder, slower anyway and get that, that to me is getting less results but I want to still get high quality results. I do not want to touch the glass with my glass cloth. I want to get these windows cleaned in the most efficient and effective way as possible to suit the environment that I'm working in. So what I did just there in the normal circumstances was just mop up the glass and then start squeegeeing. But I've got to work differently because if I mopped up the glass like this and wait a few seconds and just have a look around, if it was hot weather, that's starting to evaporate straight away. Okay, and by the time I've started squeegeeing, it's now getting sticky and st and then I'm leaving a load of smears and you know I've made a mess. I've got to start again. So what I do is I decompartmentalise the window and. Um, it's very easy to work on a window where it doesn't have any frames to it so I can get zero detail zero mistakes with this box standard bar squeegee like this so I'm not touching the frames well I won't get zero detail results down here but in the middle of the glass I won't get any problems right so if I was cleaning these oven manga, mangoes they're called um, they're, um, and they've got no frames to them whereas the ones that I do do have frames on I've got more chance of getting the job done with a high effect but these windows do have uh, 
but they're not windows as such. They're not like normal UPVC windows like you get in the UK. They're, they're oven windows, but they've still got a, a metal frame to them. No, don't think they've got a rubber ceiling because it won't be. It, 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 we, the temperatures get very, very hot. So as soon as I do this, it's steaming off. So how do I get, with my tool and technique alone, to get my window cleaned the best possible way in those circumstances of being really hot? So what I do is, as I said, de decompartmentalize the window and I mop up like I normally would do and I'm double handing. So I've done that part of the window. Imagine this window was a lot bigger. This is the best scenario I've got to work on. So I don't need to worry about this because that's going to be mopped back up again. So whatever mistake and residue that's left behind. So I'm washing the window and then I start squeegeeing straight away again. And then like that. So I'm decompartmentalizing the glass. Only soaping up a certain section. Squeegee off ASAP. Move over to the next section. So I'm working longer, harder, slower to get this glass cleaned than I would do in normal circumstances, as in just doing it once like this. So I have to evolve and adapt to my circumstances to get the best effect as possible. Just like if it was freezing cold, we're just over minus temperatures now, um, I have to use the de-icer on some of the windows because not all the windows are gonna be um, in the shade, they might freeze up. If the te temperature in the room is cold, then the windows will be icing up very quick. So, there's one little suggestion. If it's working in the heat, um, that's why I don't have any problems working in extreme heat. I decompartmentalize the window, and uh, again, I've not really heard anybody talk like that. But I wanted to talk about something a little bit separately, differently, um, as well. Um, I remember when I first came out with the, uh, no, just before the liquidator was coming out, I was doing teaser videos, and uh, there was uh, a window cleaner who's from Scotland, and he said, well, we don't need these um, zero detailing tools, <coughs> because with whatever squeegee you've got, you can get zero detail results. And I was thinking, hmm, I've heard so many people say, or tell me, oh yeah, I can get better results doing it this way, doing it that way, doing this tool, that tool, whatever. And every single time, it's a failure. When they try to prove something to me, it's a complete and utter failure. But, there's a couple of window cleaners who talked about this. Let's not talk about extreme conditions anymore. Let's talk about extreme techniques, as in techniques that don't work very well. So I've got me brass squeegee here and uh, we're talking dive bombing I've did, I have talked about this in previous videos but because I can't uh, locate them they're there somewhere I just don't have the time so if I just cover it quickly because a couple of guys have talked about well, what about dive bombing uh, in, in their comments and I said don't waste your time with dive bombing dive bombing is when you get a normal squeegee and you're going up and down, up and down, trying to get as much residue off the glass, uh, so well, off the glass where the um, frame is. Well, what is the problem with that? There's many problems with that, but I'm going to just outline maybe two, quickly. Problem is, you're not going to get zero detail results all across the glass. You might get it in some places, but there'll be many places on the glass if you're cleaning hundreds of glass on a building, you're going to get mistake after mistake after mistake. Not only that, you're wasting time trying to get that zero detail in the first place by making lots of excessive moves just to get the detail, minimum detail effect. You're working longer, harder, slower, and you're getting less results. So, what do I suggest? I suggest you learn how to use a zero detailing tool in the first place and you don't have to waste your time making excessive moves to a window taking you three four times as long as it should do if you use the right foundation put this tool in the right place at the right time make one pass where it needs to go 
and then you can get the squeegee to do 100% of the glass as long as you're putting it in the right place at the right time the squeegee rubber is aligned properly you've got a decent squeegee rubber in there in the first place so zero detail results on the glass of course we've got lots of soap down here we're not talking window we're talking glass so put the squeegee in the right place at the right time one pass I'm not doing double handed technique here I'm just showing you that putting it in the right place at the right time gives you detail free results what have I done I've gone flush at like a 90 degree angle with the squeegee against the frame I've not dug anything in like with the dive bombing flush perfectly flush if you go perfectly flush you're not going to get anything digging in it's going to be as smooth as possible against any sort of frame but if you've got a problematic frame you're working up against and last but not least um, this is a sealless window so sealless window there is a seal in there but it's concealed so I should say concealed window uh, seal that's the rubber seal that separates the glass pane from the uh, frame itself the old-fashioned UPVC windows had a protruding outside seal but for the last 22, 23, 24 years most manufacturers make concealed seal windows the problem with having a concealed concealed win windows is when you close out to the side the squeegee rubber doesn't fully close out to the side of the frame so you get a residue left behind so I always suggest with these concealed seal windows close out to the bottom because if you close out to the side and you're doing that hundreds of times it doesn't close out fully it doesn't close out flush and then you've got all these residue here that either you need to detail quite often the windows that I work on the frame's quite thick so even if you put a towel in there still can't get those bubbles fully away so on concealed sealed windows close out to the bottom and then you've got no residue at the sides there but when you've got protruding rubber seals coming out you can close out to the side or to the bottom but quite often these days I close out to the bottom most of the time anyway so I just want to reduce as much aggravation as possible when I'm working and um, there's no right or wrong way of doing things but there are much more effective ways of working there are much more effective tools and if you know how to use the effective methods to use these tools you will never ever need any tool that's going to make your work longer harder slower again